Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Once More With Feeling. I'm your host, Edmund Scrivens, and joining me is... Josh. Hi. That'd be me. <laughs> this week... Can you tell this is unrehearsed? <laughs> this week we'll be discussing more of the music we've been listening to recently and discussing the other part of Devin Townsend's new album releases, uh, Sky Blue which is released under his Devin Townsend Project label. So yeah, uh, what sorts of things have you been listening to recently? Um, well, there's the Devin Townsend that you sent me. Yeah. Well, you linked me to. Mm. Uh, aside from that, I've just been listening to the things that I usually listen to, which are things like Rise Against, Lincoln Park, just off the top of my head. Uh, Jeff Williams, the Ruby and Red vs. Blue soundtracks. Ah. That's the main gist of what I've been listening to. So, you know, it's, I know it's a bit different to what you usually listen to. Uh, well, at the moment, it's a bit difficult to predict what I'll be listening to, because a um, few things that... Hmm? <laughs> Sorry, my, my bloody housemate is just in the background making noises. T typical. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind? Don't you sit there, like, singing? <laughs> Actually, on that note, I did forget to mention the Metal Gear Rising soundtrack. Oh, yeah. That seems to be something that we're all listening to at the moment. It is it is catchy. Yeah. That's all I can say. It's so catchy. Also, if you're finding yourself in certain moods, it does help as a sort of... Uh, I need something to just kick my brain into rage gear. Yeah, like, I turn on that soundtrack and suddenly I can just get stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that aside... <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit difficult to predict what I'll be listening to, because um, a few days ago I decided to listen to some Nelly Furtado, of all things, which... At one point, I would have classified as a guilty pleasure, but now I just listen to it because I want to. Mm, that's fair enough. I mean, I can't say that I do that myself. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't think I've actually listened to anything by her, so... Um, I just got curious, so, uh, one day, because all I'd really heard of hers was, like, uh, Man Eater and things like that. So I got curious about what other stuff she'd done, and it's actually really good. And um, ah, oh, give me a sec, because um, there's a few things of hers that I would genuinely recommend. Uh, Turn off the light is quite a good one to get into, as is uh, Manos Alar. God, that was a horrible pronunciation. <laughs> it's been a while since I did Spanish. I yeah, I thought you slipped into a bit of Welsh then. <laughs> a bit worried. Well, it's not really Spanish, it's more... it is Portuguese, so... And Portuguese is like a mashup of the two languages. Mm. Apologies to any Portuguese listeners. <laughs> That's just... Apologies to everyone we offend with this. <laughs> Well, last week I was pissed. I was offending Coldplay, Radiohead, Nickelback, and um, Linkin Park fans. So, the last of which is incredibly ironic, considering incredibly <laughs> ironic. And seeing as I'm just sat here looking at my iTunes list now, it's just Linkin Park all the way down. <laughs> well, also two of the key things that um, I've been listening to recently have been My December and A Place For My Head. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to Guilty Pleasures, the only thing I'd say that I've really listened to as a Guilty Pleasure that I really consider I've got it there and it's not really something I should listen to but sometimes I do is probably like the, all the two songs I have from Paramore. Ah. Uh. Never been able to get into Paramore, though it was one of those... Something about their lead singer's voice just put me off quite a bit. Mm, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, I kind of like it, but I also know I kind of shouldn't like it. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah, it's like, well, uh, an incredibly guilty pleasure of mine is um, Last Friday Night by... Um, Oh god, her, her name has suddenly escaped my brain in a bid to... <laughs> yep. Yep. In a bid to preserve my dignity. 
Um, oh god, what is her name? You see, I can't remember the name of the actual oh. song, and it's annoying me. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I've been listening to, just ironically, is a uh, smoke weed every day. <laughs> oh, god, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah, because I'm. Because, yeah, people won't know because they won't see my face. I'm like the whitest guy in the entire universe. <laughs> I could not be less gangster if I tried hard. So I'm just sat there, you know, smooth weed every day. Just doing the thing. Yeah, I mean, it's rather disturbing. I'm probably blacker than you, and I... <laughs> <laughs> you probably are. I mean, most people are, to be fair. <laughs> then again... It's really weird. I've actually recently gotten into a lot of Eminem and things like that, and it's all sort of like, wait, what happened? I used to be just metal all the time. What? I, I don't get what's going on. What is this? Well, I, I figure I'm fine until I start wearing copious amounts of gold <laughs> and referring to people as homies and bitches, depending on gender. It's at that point where I know I've crossed the line, <laughs> and I'm probably going to get shot. Either that, or everyone's going to dogpile you and just tear the gold chains off. <laughs> no, it's a surreal experience though, playing League of Legends while listening to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I've got to try. Really is. I've got to try that at some point. <laughs> And again, a while back I did have quite... Well, I was playing World of Warcraft and had um, Bloodhound Gang playing and it was one of those, what? This does not fit at all. It was like um, Magna Cum Nada that I was listening to and it was just sort of like, yeah, this does not fit at all in any way. Um, and See it, guilty pleasures. <laughs> and I remember the name Katy Perry. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And it's one of those, why do I like this? I hate Katy Perry. I was forced to listen to her whilst I was doing my job at Chessington World of Adventures. She's crap. <laughs> why do I enjoy this? <laughs> it's weird though. It's always the stuff that you shouldn't like. Yeah. It's like, um, I'm just going to put it out there. I absolutely hate Lady Gaga. I, Cause I, you, you couldn't have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> I I th I think she's generally her music is completely squandering the talent that she quite obviously has when you listen to her acoustic work, and it's just overproduced crap in my opinion. But with that said. A guilty pleasure of mine is Born This Way, although I probably have Weird Al to blame for that. It is very weird. The, the thing... just, I know there are other things as well. Yeah. And like, I think I've, I think I've just listened to like really bad AMVs on YouTube. Yeah. I think that's the worst of it. Well, bad AMVs is not difficult to come by. It's pretty much all of them. Yeah. Well, there's the occasional one, but that I did say pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> That's... Let's just qualify that. Yeah, but it's generally ones where the song really fits in well with the visuals, like um, one anime that uh, I've seen an AMV of, uh, Azumanga Daio. All right. Um, now there's a teacher in that who is a bit of a perv, to say Ooh. the least. And um, because of this, someone took clips of Azamanga Dio and synced it up with the Oingo Boingo song, um, Danny Elfman's <coughs> old band. Um, I like little girls. Oh God. And it works so perfectly, but at the same time, you're just going, oh God, it works, but oh God. <coughs> yeah, it's like, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, but dear god, what is this? Yeah, because the chorus and the opening line is ah, I love little girls, they make me feel so good. And yep. when you. and the video for it is just. the original video, you're just sort of like, oh god. Because it opens up with this Girl Scout or something like that going from door to door and ringing on doorbells and go, does this three times and the third time is when Danny Elfman opens the door and bursts into song with that. <laughs> and it's one of those, at the end, you just have the girl turn around slowly in shock. Yep. <laughs> 
reckon she would? Danny Elfman. Yeah. Danny Elfman just. I, I'm not. I'm not sure that this conversation is great in or out of context. That's the thing. I'm kind of worried. Where do, where do we go from here? I don't even know. It's like the end of. God. It's like the end of the Buffy musical. Where do we go from here? Oh, don't tell me there's a Buffy musical. Well, it's actually in the context of the series. One of them accidentally summons a demon that causes everyone to burst into song. That's actually pretty funny. Yeah. It is actually... It's not like someone took Buffy and put it on Broadway or anything like that. They just... They basically did a Rocky Horror style thing. Ah, oh, okay. Um, actually, that ties in with the title of the show, Once More With Feeling. <laughs> bringing it back! Bringing back! Um, bringing it back! Somehow. Um... We should probably get to discussing the album because we kind of we went on some weird tangents there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not really. This is why. This is why. Um, this is why we don't listen to Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> oh god, there would be so many tangents. Otherwise, you will get beaten up and have all your jewelry stolen. <laughs> <laughs> to just summarise my part from last last 10 or so minutes yeah <laughs> meanwhile I just confuse people with songs about paedophilia <laughs> yeah moving swiftly on okay so you linked me to the album yeah I wasn't I had no idea what to expect mm -hmm. just as a disclaimer I would not actually heard of the artist before I knew nothing about it so I went in not knowing what to expect I actually really liked it yeah um that's, a, that's one thing I've found with most people. I mean, that's how I started. I didn't really know. I knew of Devin Townsend before university, but I didn't really know his stuff that well. And when I started listening, I was grabbed from the start. So generally, that is what I've found happens with a lot of people. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate for my experience as well. Mm. I think I listened to the first song the first time. I was just kind of struck by how it's. it was somewhere between uh, Dragon Force and Two Steps from Hell for me. Yeah, I, I can see that. And, you know, that's a lot different to the stuff that I usually listen to. Mm. Yeah. The thing about Devin Townsend is he will experiment with sounds quite a lot. Um the previous five albums were all sort of experimentations in sound and for me at least I, I know you uh, didn't have much of a chance to listen to the previous stuff but for me it feels like this album is kind of him bringing all the different elements for each of those albums together. Yeah on my very brief search around the subject which I did after listening to it Mm -hmm. That's generally the feel that I got from a lot of other people as well. That this is sort of a culmination of everything he's done so far wrapped up into one album. Yeah, I mean, it's why it feels quite appropriate that it was done in conjunction with the other album in the collection, which is Dark Matters, which is a sequel album to Ziltoid the Omniscient, because it's sort of like... I've got sort of my magnum opus here, and I've got the continuation of a story here, and I want you to experience both. Mm. I mean, it is an interesting choice having two albums tied into each other in, so in that kind of way. Mm. Yeah, I mean, themes and sound-wise, they are different, but I can understand why they were released together if that makes sense yeah yeah i i was i was admittedly a bit puzzled upon the opening of the first album i was sort of like well this is very different to what he normally does and then when it progressed i was sort of going over uh previous albums and going actually although it's different it's a continuation i right, um mm. Uh, Rejoice does actually feel like an appropriate title for that song. Hmm? I had a point there and it just <laughs> completely escaped me, so... Because <laughs> um, it does feel like a celebration of his work. Um, yeah, there was a very... To put it in very basic terms, there was a very positive vibe coming from it. Mm. Which... I mean, obviously, I, I can't comment deeper than that mm. based on his other works, so... Yeah, I'm going to have to leave that bit up to you. 
Well, that is a reasonable statement to make. Um, it's actually, it's why I can, although a lot of it does sound like a culmination of things, there seems to be not an omission, but there seems to be less from the first album of because what it is is um, the Devin Townsend Project series of albums. It was originally structured as just four albums of Key, Addicted, Deconstruction and Ghost. Um, and then he released Epic Cloud under the Devin Townsend Project label, which did actually feel like a theological continuation. I'll go into the ideals behind the different albums in a moment. Um, and I think the whole reason that he continued with this under the Devin Townsend, Townsend Project title was because it felt like everything was coming together. But Key seems to be a bit less recognised on the album, and I think I know why, because the theory be behind the first four albums, uh, Key was him experimenting heavily with reservation in sound, because at that point he was trying to figure out a way of doing music without involving sort of anger and rage that had been frequent with his previous band, uh, Strapping Young Lad. And so he was every so often during the album it's all reached the threshold of getting super angry and it might tip over briefly and then it'll come back mm. um, and then it gets to addicted where he's sort of like okay I figured things out with the last album how do I progress I don't need to restrain myself as much I can still get heavy without it necessarily being angry so you've got things like uh, Bend It Like Bender um, just so as you know the album did come out in 2000 and 2008 2009 so yes future art it could easily be a Futurama reference because Devin Townsend is a massive nerd. Um, Bend It Like Bender is a very sort of, you know, it's heavy, but it's all-inclusive. It's sort of, there's a, not party, but everyone needs to come together kind of vibe going through it. Um, and then it kind of, it really does play around with sounds because then you've got things like ER, and no, that's not a um, farmer's song or anything like that, as the title so may suggest. more like a western. <laughs> e -a -e -a -e -a. <laughs> uh, it's just, um, it's actually um, onomatopoeia for breathing, and that's a very sort that's of... a very interesting way of looking at things. Mm. Not, it's sort of a love song to the audience, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's sort of you could take it in any context a love song to family friends partner or just your audience in general and it just it feels very tight and comes together quite well um then you get to deconstruction which feels like him going i'm worried i think i may have been a bit pretentious for the last two albums <clears throat> okay we need to break things down a bit we need to get back to roots and so it don't that album gets a lot heavier and that one i'd say sky blue draws upon the most in terms of sort of rhythm and tempo and things like that um also there are a lot of sounds that are drawn upon but basically the theory behind that is you can deconstruct and deconstruct and eventually what you'll have is something completely meaningless so yeah okay i may be getting back to my roots but i can't just dismantle myself like that i need to still progress with sounds and finally you get to Ghost, uh, trying to think back to, because he released this comic basically explaining the theory behind the albums, and Ghost is a very different album to literally everything else that Devin Townsend has released. It's very different to all of it, 
because that's more world music t- kind of sound. Okay, I'll be honest, I don't actually know what world music is. Uh, that's sort of... Um, I mean, I don't know the term, basically. Uh, world music, I'm uh, trying to think of how to describe it. Um, think along the lines of clanad, things like that. Because you say world music, and I start thinking overworld music from, like, um, RPGs, obviously video game. Ah, uh, no, world music... Mu- World music is kind of drawing on more cultural aspects and combining them into a specific sound. Oh, I see. And it's not heavy in the slightest. It's actually a very relaxed mm. and calm album. There you go. For, for all the two other people that didn't know what world music was, <laughs> there we go, guys. Good job. But uh, basically, that album is him going, okay, I've done the heavy stuff, I've done the reserved and pop metal, and I've done all that. Now let's see how I can be completely different and just experiment with sounds and see if I can do something that's calm and more cerebral. Mm. And so it's sort of like saying, in the end, you can have all this heavy, heavy stuff, but you do need to find time to relax and just let yourself go. Yeah. I mean, what I will say about Sky Blue as well was that it didn't feel to me to be... It didn't feel like it was, like, edgy heavy. Anything. Yeah. Like, it didn't feel like it was being heavy and anger and all that no, kind it's... of stuff that you might find with a lot of... Uh, heavy metal death metal that kind of stuff mm. but it did still feel like heavy it did still still feel uh epic really is the word i'm looking for yeah i think epic is a perfect way to describe it i mean that's where i that's where i think it really overlaps with uh things like audio machine two steps from hell mm. all that kind of stuff yeah and uh... It definitely feels like a step forward for him, from my point of view. It's so it's going, okay, I'm bringing all these elements together, but I'm still going to add in other things, like, um, oh, I'm trying to think which song it is, but some of them feel like he's drawing upon, uh, say, uh, Rob Zombie's sort of sound. Um, just give me a sec. Um, yeah, Silent Militia feels a lot like it draws upon aspects of Rob Zombie's music at times. Mm. Not his heavier stuff, but more sort of, well, things like Dragula and um, stuff like that. It feels like he's taking influences from. I also want to say that some of it, it feels like he's looked at bands like Daft Punk and bands like that to get a bit of influence from. Yeah, there were very definitely some songs on there that then, that after listening to, and the name of the first track now escapes me right when I need it. Uh, Rejoice. Yes. Yeah, after listening to Rejoice, there's some songs that felt not out of place, but they didn't quite uh, mesh mm-hmm. with the initial tone. Yeah, that... that Rejoice seemed to set. I mean, it shows me something that you might have to listen to it like, a few more times before they start really making sense, because there's a lot of songs that do that on a lot of different albums. And it's incredibly rare for me to just pick up an album and go, I liked every single thing equally. And I think that's fair to say for everyone, really. Yeah. So but... it, they could just be some of those songs that it just takes a little longer to you know get to know, get the feel for them. Yeah, I mean, for me in particular, uh, Forever didn't feel quite like it meshed with the rest of the album. Mm. The sound, it felt, well, it's not so much that it didn't mesh as much as the placement didn't seem to work right. Yeah, I mean, I say it doesn't mesh and it sounds like a bad thing. Sometimes that distance can be good. Mm. You know, I look at... Uh, Siren Song for the Counterculture, for example, from Rise Against, and you've got things like the first drop and Life Less Frightening right at the beginning, which are kind of like your typical fare from Rise Against. Mm -hmm. And then later on in that same album, you've got Swing Life Away, which is completely different, but, you know, they all they're all still sat there they all still work i think it's much the same case here of it's a different kind of song on the same album yeah it just takes a little more time to get used to it yeah i have listened through the album a couple of times and um 
it definitely is a case of sort of taking the songs both as as they are and how they work in the context of everything because well there's almost like three different levels you can uh take them on with there's like just the song itself there's the song in relation to the album and then there's the song in relation to the rest of the artist's work yeah i mean forever does still feel like a devin townsend song it just at the moment and as you've been saying so give the album a listen through a few more times um at the moment it doesn't i would have personally placed it as an end track because that's the one thing that I find most jarring about it, because it's in between two fairly heavy songs. Yeah. And then it's quite a light one in comparison. I mean, it might have... Talking out my ass it like I know anything about uh, musical composure, <laughs> it might have worked better, possibly at the very end? Yeah. Second to last? Yeah, though it's only third from last, so... But putting it between two heavy songs, mm, yeah. it can be a bit jarring. But then maybe that's the point. I no, I don't, I don't know because I didn't do a massive amount of <laughs> well knowing, research around it. I'm afraid. Well, knowing what Devin Townsend can be like, I mean, um, I have actually talked to him, so I'm able to. This isn't just me assuming. I'm able to go. Oh, yeah. Well, he does like to play around with things. I wouldn't be surprised if he did go, let's test the listener with this, you know, and see how how they can experience things from going from one emotion to another. Mm. That would, yeah, that would make a lot of sense then. Mm. We seem to be running a, a bit out of steam with discussing this one. Yeah, I mean, I kind of wish I'd done a bit more around it, but uh, it's, the circumstances kind of dictated that I couldn't. That's fair enough. I mean, life does get in the way of things, and this is just a kooky little sideshow that I'm doing because I have nothing else to do, so... That's fair enough. Yeah, uh, for the moment, might as well start wrapping things up. Yeah. As it stands, talking star ratings, what rating would you give it? On a very pre-judgmental initial reaction, mm -hmm. it's it's quite hard because it's quite dissimilar to anything else I really listen to. Mm. But then that is, that's kind of something that goes in its favour because it's pretty, it's fairly unique. Yeah. All things said and done. What are you saying, like, out of five, out of ten? Uh, out of five. Oh, always out of five. <laughs> it's an awkward number. It would probably be four, four and a half, because I'm going to cop out and use halves. <laughs> Uh, for, the, for the simple reason that it was straight up memorable, mm. like I could remember the sound very, very, very easily. Yeah. And it was good. Mm. You know, it wasn't just cookie cutter. Here's more sound I'm going to throw at you. It was actually engaging. Yeah. You know, I'm a massive fan of Carnival for the very same reason. Mm -hmm. In that it's unique. It's something that isn't really you know, out there massively. Yeah. And I appreciate that. It's good, I yeah. think, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd, I'd be inclined to give it the same sort of ratings of four, four and a half. Maybe on... Gotta say the half, because four feels a bit weak. Yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe that rating might actually increase after repeated listens, because it is a, a very good album, and as you say, the songs are memorable, and they don't... Nothing feels like it blends into each other which I find is a problem with a lot of albums these days. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's really any two songs that after quite a few listens I just straight up get confused because they're similar. Yeah. yeah. One thing that does surprise me, because um, for production of this album, uh, for one of the songs, uh, Before We Die, he did what's known as the Universal Choir. I mentioned this uh, the other week, which is basically him going to the fans, here are the lyrics, here's the raw file, record yourselves singing it, and you might end up on the song. Okay. And what surprises me is that he didn't do it for the song Universal Flame. Just given the name alone, that's kind of the one you'd expect it to uh, turn up on. Yeah, I was very surprised, sort of like, Wait, this is called Universal Flame. 
and yet he doesn't have the universal choir on it. Huh. Then again, he doesn't go predictable, so... On the one hand, it's surprising. On the other hand, it's Devin. Yeah, it's, it's just him mm. doing his thing. Yeah. Um, so... I mean, I, I don't really have anything else to say about it. I thought it was definitely solid. Yeah. What I think it was trying to do. Yeah. Very definitely enjoyable, very definitely good. Hmm. Now I just wish I wasn't a poor student so I could actually buy it. <laughs> well, um, you never know. Uh, considering how often HMV has sales and whatnot, you might get lucky. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's... I got it for sixteen ninety nine, which that was the special edition which was sky blue, um, dark matters and a because Dark Matters is staged as a musical, there's a lot of dialogue in it. There's a non-dialogue version of it as well. Oh, okay. So, you might be lucky. I mean, he might. it might be a case of he's released all the albums as separate ones, as well as in packs. It would be worth checking. Good to know. But yeah, uh, at the moment, would you be able to say any particular song being your favourite from the album? Having listened to the album a couple of times, mm -hmm. it's gone again. Rejoice. It's the opening song. Yeah, that's Rejoice. Rejoice, there we go. I keep thinking it begins with J and I'm like, Justice? No, no that's not it. <laughs> Trying but, to... um, yeah, that's the one. You know, it's going to be good because the very first song just instantly hooks you. Mm. And it's the one like. I keep coming back to when I think about the album mm -hmm. and while I think that's a natural reaction or should be a natural reaction for any album mm -hmm. I do come back to it in a way that I think this could well have just entered my top five of literally like every song ever that's, so that's you know, that's, a bit of a, that's a bit of a strong resonance there yeah um, personally I my personal favourite would be Universal Flame just because that's the sort of song that really resonates for me as a you need a song to make you feel better have this and those sorts of songs really grab my attention a song that you know doesn't matter what mood you're in you can just immediately gravitate towards it that sort of thing really and that would actually again potentially enter my top five so, yeah, we've got quite high praise for this album, it seems. Yeah, yeah, it was, as I said, it, it's something pretty pretty new to me, so it's something I'm definitely going to have a look around, you know, see what else, what the other things are like. And who knows, I could come back to this a, a David Townsend expert, so... Devin Townsend. Devin. <laughs> My uncle's David. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> yeah, I could come back an expert and actually get his name right. <laughs> well, glad to know that I've encouraged a new fan. Anyway, uh, might as well wrap this up. Um, quite yep. a bit shorter than last week's episode, but considering that it's all just us doing things on the fly, the length of episodes is going to be random. So yeah, that's goodbye from me. And I guess that's goodbye for me. And tune in next week if things go accordingly. Bye.